Welcome to Get to the Hook. Uh, I am your co-host, Charles Latibaudier. And I'm your co-host, Eric Colley. So this week we are uh, coming to you with a pretty heavy, uh, pretty heavy topic, but one that everyone is talking about, obviously, the death of Liam Payne at just 31, uh, and how it has really impacted not only millions of One Direction fans, obviously, who are still grieving, but uh, we've seen so many people in the industry, uh, so many other artists who were connected to One Direction or Liam directly, uh, who worked with him, who are really going through it. And there's, um, there's a pattern here, and it's something that we noticed just here uh, covering the story and uh, seeing how people react to it. Um, we've seen this before with right. other um, with other deaths in uh, in celebrity deaths and how people are reacting and why they react um, the way they do it. And it has to do with um, it's something we've all gone through. Um, and in particular, this time, what I've noticed here in our newsroom that the people in our newsroom who were really affected by it, and I say affected like. Um, crying uh, right. it's on a, it's the a day personal loss to it you. is a even, very personal loss even when you don't know these celebrities these musicians there are certain ones that just hit you really really hard because they you at, you attach them to your own life depending on how old you are um you we always say this the like music of your youth in the years between the years of like 11 and 30, mm -hmm. those songs, when they come out, you attach to really big moments in your life. It's when you're growing up. Um, and and so you're more moved by those artists dying. So for instance, you know, Liam Payne, I, I knew One Direction. Um, I know- a little song for anybody that's listening that is like, right. and I think that's the thing, a lot of older people I think were shocked by how big this reaction is. Right. Because if you were, over 30 when One Direction hit, you thought of them as maybe a boy band, maybe you liked Harry Styles, and you, maybe you liked some of his songs. You could be now. aware that they were popular, right. you know some of their songs, but, but it, it doesn't, still doesn't it's not the soundtrack the of way. your life. And this is, this is one of their, their yeah. bigger songs that Liam co-wrote, this is Story of My Life. The story of my life, I take her home, I drive all night to keep her warm in time. And you know, if you were- So I know that song, uh, I, I knew yeah. that it was popular, but it still doesn't have it's not the story of your life. Correct. Yeah. Correct. It, it doesn't it doesn't land on me the same way I've noticed it does for a lot of people in our newsroom, in our, in our if, office. If you are in your like mid to late twenties now, you were probably 10, 11, 12, 13 years old when One Direction was really huge, like twenty twelve to twenty fifteen, that those couple of years. Those were the formative songs of your youth. They were how you discovered music. Maybe that was a crush that you had was on Liam or one of them. Yeah. And a lot of the when you're when you're young and those those songs you grow up with, when someone that you grew up with like that dies young, it might be the first time you've ever experienced, experienced death, death at all. Death, yeah. Maybe you probably have not experienced it in your, in your family, family yet. Yeah, right. Or your friends or your, you know, I've seen comments people have been posting about Liam like, we're only in our 20s, like how can this be? And that's the thing, you don't, it's so shocking. You haven't experienced it, yeah. Right, and it's, especially like Liam Payne just seemed random. Like it wasn't, you know, I think maybe one of the first ones for me just that shock of somebody that I not even grew up with, but like when Kurt Cobain died, mm -hmm. yeah, it was just such a shock. But also, it kind of wasn't, you know. And, and you Tupac knew. and Biggie, like Kurt Cobain had attempted suicide before he killed himself. Tupac and Biggie, Tupac had been shot before. It was shocking and it was sad, but in a way. But it was not um, not out of the realm of right. possibility. Like yeah, it was something that you had sort of lived with this might happen, and so when you hear it, those things aren't as shocking as the case of yeah, Liam, it's where- just, you hope that thing wouldn't happen. Like, you know, I think with Amy Winehouse, it was so devastating when she died, but you saw her struggling. You saw the struggle, so long. you saw the, the spiral. Right, and when you're a little bit older, you've seen it before, and you're like, I, I know where this is going, I hope it doesn't. And we've seen some people who did turn themselves around and, and, yeah. and save their own lives. She sadly wasn't one of them. That's a different kind of thing, too, than this, like Liam Payne, and he had had you know some addiction issues he had talked about before, but this just seemed to come out of nowhere. Yeah, him jumping off the balcony, whether it was you know some people think it was suicide, some think it was just he was under the influence of, of drugs, of drugs yeah. hallucinogenics, maybe. 
Um, but I think it just it caught a lot of 20 somethings completely off guard. And, and I guess what I and this is the point of this particular episode. Um, you're not alone is what I would say to right. One Direction Liam Payne fans who are um, really going through it right now. Generations have gone through this. Um, your parents have, in some cases, your grandparents uh, have gone through this in their generations because it, it happens in almost every generation. And so the, we're going to... The, the flip side of that, if, you're, if you are the parent or the grandparent, you're like, I don't understand why they're so upset about this. Well, well, we're gonna, remember the one that was yours. Right. We're going to remind you yeah. <laughs> that, uh, that you've gone through this. And maybe it's just been so long that you've forgotten it. Um, but eh, You never forget it. I, yeah. I, one, I'm going to do a personal one. It was my mom's, actually. And this was a little bit older. It, although it's funny, my mom was about 35 when this person died, and he was 45, so a little bit older. Right. But, I mean, Liam Payne was 31, so not that much younger than my mom. But, you know, I was a little kid, so I just thought these were all just old people. Because, you know, when you're, right. a, when when you're, you're a, a child, little, child, 30, you think 30 your mom is, is just your mom. I, I, yes. <laughs> but I exactly. remember uh, when Ricky Nelson, who had been on The Adventures of Ozzy and Harriet, he was a teen heartthrob in the 50s and 60s, and was a big pop star. This was one of his number one hits. This is the song Traveling Man. Oh, I'm a traveling man. Yes, I'm a traveling man. Ricky Nelson was dreamy. He was a good looking guy. <laughs> he could sing, but he died in a plane crash in 1985. And I remember my mom just being heartbroken. She was devastated about this. Like, how is Ricky Nelson dead? Yeah. Uh, and he was only in his 40s. Like, he wasn't that old. And again, there's one where it was just shocking. Yeah, and, uh, the plane crash. Sudden, out, of, out of nowhere, it wasn't someone who was troubled. I, the, re, the example, you're talking about your mom going through this. For me, my mom, I went through this with my mom and it was Elvis. Now, right. I know what you're thinking, that there were issues with Elvis and so his wasn't, it wasn't a plane crash, so it wasn't as shocking. But it was, for me, the first time that I witnessed my mother really upset about a death and yeah. that's when it so it kind of landed on me like huh what's this death yeah thing really yeah, all you about and i was young enough that i hadn't experienced it in my family yet right um but i could see my mother my godmother who were you know bawling uh, yeah. for days and also i think this. because you know when you grow up sort of always thinking of elvis as dead or he was dead your entire life he was only 42 when he died. He was, I know, I he was a ab- decade older than Larry Payne. I think about these things all the time because I look at, I'm like, how am I, oh my gosh, I'm older. Than Elvis Considerably was. older <laughs> than someone like Elvis was uh, when, when he died. So it just it seemed is, like they'd lived like 20 lifetimes. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's wild. And this goes back to the beginning of like the rock era, one of the most infamous moments. And I think a moment that defined a generation. And sometimes the loss can be so big and so devastating that you never get over it. It was in 1959, the plane crash that killed Buddy Holly, Richie Valens, and the Big Bopper. Buddy Holly was 22 years old. Richie Valens was 17. Died that's, in a plane crash. That's the crash. thing about Richie Valens I always forget. And I and actually didn't... He wasn't even, even old enough to vote. Didn't know it until I saw the movie La Bamba. And, right. And, it, and all of that became clear to me. But yeah, I just grew up knowing of it as the clip we're about to play. Right. Uh, this is how I learned about that particular... Yeah. And disaster. It, well, we're doing Don McLean's American Pie, which, I mean, that song came out in 1971, hit in 72. I mean, well over a decade later, and it, the song was such a big hit because it captured that, that heartbreak this generation still had 10 years later, and they, it became known as The Day the Music Died because of this lyric in the song. But something touched me deep inside the day the music died. That was a definitive moment for people. Really, that age. and and you listen to that lyric, and it applies to Liam. What Liam Payne's fans are feeling today, like for those who are experiencing death for the first time, that's what it feels like to them. Yeah, this the music the died. My music childhood died. died. Like your innocence. Yeah, it, it's it's. I mean, it sounds like it's kind of overstating it, but it's really not. Yeah, your concept of the world and life and death it, when you're so young changes instantly when those things happen. Yeah, and and the more it happens. You get a little jaded, but you still always have that with you. You're right. That is exactly why that song is still what it is today, that you have people much younger than us who will be at karaoke singing that song. Right. Um, I've seen it, and I'm like, how does this person know this <laughs> also, song? Also, poor but, form to pick that for karaoke, because that song's like nine minutes long. You are really hard right, to exactly. like, come on, man. Come You're going to do both parts? Oh. Get the Chevy to the levee. Come on, move on with this. 
Uh, but yeah, that that was a song. And this next one was also kind of a tribute song. And again, it seemed like this was somebody older, but when John Lennon was murdered, I mean, it was yes. so unexpected. It wasn't a, a drug addiction. He just a random Walking psycho home and... shot him outside of his home and killed him. And that was the end of an innocence for that generation. I've, I've seen people say before that the 70s began when the Beatles broke up and the 70s ended when John Lennon was killed, which was actually 1980. But uh, the year after, George Harrison got his biggest hit in almost a decade with this song. That's number two. It's called All Those Years Ago, and it's a tribute to John and looking back on their youth. I knew that the world went back up to the wall. Because it was the, that boomer generation. Yeah. They're like, well, we've grown up now. John Lennon's been murdered in the streets. This is, this is what life is now. Yeah. And, and then you start losing parents, friends. Yeah. It's just it, life. You know what? You really do. And for that, for that generation. And even, you know, I remember when that song came out and I knew what it was. And I lived in New York when John Lennon was, was murdered. Um, and I do remember my mom being upset. But it wasn't, it's almost like. She'd been through it already with, with Elvis. Elvis. And so it, she was upset, but it wasn't, because she grew up with the Beatles also. Um, but I do remember her saying that, that it was, wow, I can't believe one of the Beatles has been, is, yeah. is now dead. And because something, they grew up on that. Yeah, and, and it's also something, a sadness there, and I'm going to compare this to One Direction. And don't get mad at me saying I'm comparing the Beatles to One <laughs> Direction. But it's the same idea, because I've seen so many comments, people saying, you know, they will never get back together now. Because no matter how huge Harry Styles' solo career is, and they've all been very successful solo. Liam had a top 10 hit called Strip That Down. There was always that hope that someday they'll reunite. That they would, yeah. And it was the same thing with the Beatles for a decade. It, it's really, someday they're, they're going to get back together. Yeah. And then in that moment, you realize it's never going to it's happen. It's never going to happen. Even if the and, other four members get together, you know, when Paul and Ringo and George did that thing with, with John's vocals, it's not still not. Thing. It's not the same. The, the actual original group can never get back together. And there's a... Real grief in that. Yeah. I, I, honestly, I, I feel like I, I mean, I, it's hard to say because we don't know how John would feel about this, but it does feel like the other members certainly would have been open to it at some point in the last 10 years. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then they lost George Harrison, of course. But um, and so it can never happen. And it's just so I remember um, even when when we've talked about this date when Led Zeppelin did get back together, but it's still, and as much as it was a tremendous show, just a single show, you still felt like John Bonham wasn't there. I know it was his son who played, but, but it still, wasn't. You never get to see right. the original lineup. You won't see the original lineup. Um, I, I still think every time, and I've seen the Stones countless times, but I, in the back of my head, I always go, this is not the original Rolling Stones. And like, I'll, I'll watch clips of them when they're starting out playing, right. it's like, oh man, if I'd seen that, you know, <laughs> time travel concert. Yeah, yeah, Ooh. yeah. Oh, there's oh, so many of those. I'd love. Yeah, that's a whole separate thing. Uh, it's funny. So you know, we grew up mostly in the '80s. Not, you know, it, it, we didn't really lose a lot of those artists when right. they were young. I mean, it was still shocking and devastating when Michael Jackson died. Oh, right, he was we didn't fifty then. Right, and it was we'd already, really in the last yeah fifteen years. And then that sadly, we'd started to once live. it started, I think within a decade, Michael Jackson, Whitney Houston, Prince. George Her uh, uh, George Michael, Tom right. Petty, Glenn Fry, all these people died. That was it's like what for our David Bowie. Like right. how are you all dying? You're not that old. You're in right. the, Whitney Houston was 48. Mm -hmm. like, how, what? But the one of, of of 80s people that died when I was young that I remember, and that's the thing. Sometimes it'll be random where you don't realize how much you really liked a person or what they represent in your life. <laughs> Maybe I don't know. You know, you won't laugh at this one. But 1997, when Michael Hutchins from NXS died. That hit me so hard, and I didn't yeah. even know why. I mean, I always loved NXS, so I knew that. Mm -hmm. But just something about, how, how, how is he dead? That kid, yeah. that just couldn't be. He was too young. He was 37. He was very, yeah, 37, very, and, and the, they were he was so vibrant, especially because he was so lively on stage, and that was a big part of the appeal of that band was Michael Hutchins' just stage presence. Um, and that he and hung to himself, that, too. That sort of changed the narrative that... And I know people always want to say it was autoerotic asphyxiation. That's been pretty well disproven at this point. Yeah. Uh, he, was, he was depressed. He hung himself. And yeah. you just think, he, he didn't seem like that guy. Which also was, does go to show that you don't actually know these people. 
Yeah, that's the other scary part. You feel of like these you deaths, do, but you really don't. When it's something like that, that's the scary part. I mean, a plane crash is a different thing, but when it's clear that they were going through something, you go like, "Damn, I just thought they were making great well, music." I even thought- Liam Payne, we saw all the videos just within days before he died, where he was greeting fans in the lobby, and he was so lovely to them. He was so nice. That's partly why they loved him so much, because he did seem like a genuinely really nice, yeah. caring guy. But you don't know. You don't know what, what he's going, going through in through, that right? hotel room by himself. No matter how fire the music is, right? That all can be true, but you, there are other things going on that we just we just never know. Yeah, and you said, but sometimes it can just be random. This next one, this was one also. This was the first time. This one hurt me, and I and again, I, I I liked her music. I liked her music. I knew her music. I didn't realize how much appeal she had to people. Because, again, I'm a little bit older than the the main Aaliyah audience. Yeah. Um, but I saw how much she actually impacted. Again, is another example where I saw another generation just devastated and, right. and it, disbelieving of what had happened. I was, I'm four years older than Aaliyah was. So I wasn't much older than her. Right. But I was a little, like, you know, she was 14, 15 when she started. I was a little bit, you know, then I'd been like 18, 19. Yeah. But it just, she was one of the first pop stars that was younger than me. So that always kind of stuck in my head, her and Brandy. It's like, <laughs> wow, how are, there, how are there people on the radio that are younger than me now? I'm still yeah. a teenager. Uh, but her death in that plane crash. So she was in the Bahamas filming the music video for this song. And I love this song. Uh, this is Aaliyah's Rock the Boat. Just seems so random and unnecessary. Just, just the plane. Yeah, a little overloaded, too much luggage, and then of course the toxicology. The the pilot had had cocaine in his system, and you yeah. just think she was twenty two. I know, and she it, was getting. She was doing movies. She just had her new album come out. Like there was such a future ahead of her, and it was just so sad to see it gone for no reason. It just felt fir- like what the first two celebrity deaths that that happened once I was. In a professional, and once I was working, were um, Aaliyah and Lisa Lopez. Oh, uh, I was about to talk about that one too. Yeah. Left Eye from from TLC died in two thousand two, the year after Aaliyah. Again, just in a car accident, and uh, I think Columbia is where she was. Yeah, and it just she was just such a a bright personality and just a big personality right. and so fun and just and just seemed like such an interesting person that was going to maybe have this huge career even outside of TLC, she could have. Oh, yeah. And she still looked at as, I think maybe not enough for my taste, not appreciated enough as, as a as female a rapper. rapper. Like yeah. how she kind of bridged that gap between the early female rappers like Queen Latifah and MC Light, and then people like Foxy Brown and, and you know, Lil' Kim. Yeah. Left Eye is kind of the, the bridge between, and she could do either one of those things. I think she just would, she was just such an interesting person. Yeah. And, you know, also with, with Aaliyah again, though, another thing about that, when I listened to that album, that self-titled album, and I love that record, and I think it still sounds good, the other weird thing is she died in August of 2001, and then not even three weeks later was September 11th. That album, it was meant to be such a joyful album, but listening to it now, it is just the sound of sadness to me mm-hmm. between her, between how the entire world changed. Like, it was feeling, everybody yeah. lost a sense of innocence on September 11th, and, yeah, she's sort of the sound of that to me. Yeah. Just that that loss. Ah, uh, yes, yes, indeed. <laughs> but yeah, heavy. And and it, by the way, and and then it's it's weird. I, part of this is making me feel old because I realize how many times I've seen new generations go through this, and maybe the most recent one before Liam Payne, where it suddenly wo- opened my eyes to wow, this person was an amazing artist that I maybe wasn't really keyed into, wasn't right. listening to, just because of age difference. And then, unfortunately, it takes the loss for an older person like myself to go, wow, what an incredible talent Mac yeah. Miller was. Yeah, we're like, talking about Mac Miller. This is, uh, again, if you're, if you're an old, <laughs> this, <yeah. laughs> is, uh, this is his song, Self Care. I switched to town song, but what do I know? Spend a nice bitch hiking, where will I go? And he's one, too, and in the age of social media, it's different, too, uh, because none of the other people we talked about really had that. Mac Miller was very popular, had a number one album. He didn't, like, crank out hit songs because that wasn't really his thing. Even when he did, like, yeah. his, like, frat party rap early on, and then he was kind of transitioning to 
more introspective and deep emotional stuff later in his life. Later in his life, he was 26 when he died. Uh, I, kn- I knew he was big. I knew he was successful. I knew a couple of his songs. But when he died, the comments I saw, the, the posts on social media from people who were in their 20s, maybe around 30 at that point, how he just saved their lives and his music soundtracked their college years, yeah. their high school years, that he was such a huge part of their lives. And again, you know, we were too old for that. Right. But but I heard but that I understood I heard exactly same, what they were saying. Yeah, I heard that same thing from so many people, and I, I was I marveled at once I started listening. It made me start listening to his music, and I just thought, wow, I got to start listening to some new music because there are artists like this who were. It was amazing. Yeah, it was amazing. and gone too soon. Somebody who that's the thing too. It's the set, the loss of your own childhood or your own adolescence growing up with these people because they are the soundtrack of your life and. When their voice is silenced, it, it, it hits you hard. But you also think, because so many of these were so young, what else could they have done? Like there's what so they much more than what they would have evolved to and yeah. And like somebody like I said, like Mac Miller, we already saw him evolve throughout oh, yeah. his, his career. It wasn't that long of a career. Uh, this next person, this one was another one that I mean, he was only around about a not not even two years on the national scene and had just turned twenty one when he died. Uh, but he had left such an, uh, an imprint on people, and there's a lot of young kids, slightly older than like the One Direction fans, but still very young. And this death just wrecked them. This is a uh, Juice World and his song "Lucid Dreams." I still see your shadows in my room. Can't take back the love that I gave you. It's to the point why I love and I hate you, and I cannot. He, he wasn't the inventor of emo rap, but he really poured his feelings out into this music that a lot of times had just been like you know, party music or you know, about like your lifestyle and how much money you got and all that. And he just was saying about his life and like, yeah, the how shock. depressed he was. And, and there's a, a wave of artists like that. But I think him being so young, it connected with people his age. They and, thought, here's somebody going through what I'm going through. And he's articulating it in these beautiful, heartbreaking songs. And then when he died, trying to hide drugs on a plane, took too yeah. many Percocets. I mean, just like, I think a week or two after he turned 21. It was not long after his birthday. It was, it was exactly. I remember, I remember we had done the story about the big birthday, 21st birthday party right. he had. Um, and then we were reporting on his death. And the one, the thing that was so sad about that particular one, even to me and not knowing, I knew that song, but I felt like this is a guy who is just now becoming everything that he wanted to be and then to lose his life. And, and then it made me realize what you just said about why young people were connecting to him. Yeah. It uh, wasn't just, oh, he makes songs that I like, or like, oh, he had a couple hits. His music really, really connected with his fans. It still does. Yeah. They, he's one of those people. I mean, think like we still see James Dean on things. He died 60 years ago, 70 years ago, because there's just certain people that get frozen that in that moment in right. time, and they will yeah. always represent something to that generation. And I think he's one of those. Mac Miller's one of those. Gen Z, I gotta be honest, like they've lost a lot of people to be as young as they are. Like XXX Tentacion was murdered. Uh, they, I think Gen Z has lost people the way um, they did in the six in the sixties yeah. and early seventies. That Jimi Hendrix was... and Janis Joplin and Jim Morrison all died. Right. But yeah, maybe that's is that every generation? Because I think you know when I look at people I grew up with in the nineties that I loved in college and stuff, there's a disproportionate number of them that are dead compared to how old well, they are. we just talked they, about. The grunge, like Kurt Cobain, and yeah. Chris Cornell's dead now. Chester Bennington is dead. Scott Whelan from Stone Temple Pilots. Lane Staley from Alice in Chains. I, was, I just remember thinking, because he died right before Left Eye. And I was like, why is everybody dying? Right. This was like 2002. I'm like, it hasn't been that long. Why are you all dead? I, you know. This is really sad. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, don't, I mean, look, I, I can't even say, like, there's, there, we're not going to, like, suddenly make this, like, a happy thing. But no. it's just to point out um, what... Every generation of music fans uh, go through, uh, and it's n- as much as it feels like, oh my gosh, this is, I can't believe this is happening to me. You're not alone. Right. It has happened to music fans for generations now, and it's uh, and if there's everyone guess, has a, a, that moment. You know, and you're always going to remember where it, you were. Yeah. It, when you heard the news, I, I remember being in my apartment college turning it on MTV because there was no internet yet. And there's Kurt Loder on MTV news saying Kurt Cobain is dead. And I just remember like that moment's frozen in my mind. Like, yeah. For how? me, I remember I, I, um, I, this was a huge one to me because again, here was a guy who I was just discovering and really delving into, uh, digging into his, his catalog, uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan. Right. 
And I remember it was my first day of class at Arizona State. I was walking to class. As I left my apartment, I was walking to class, and I heard the, the radio was on, and they reported that about the helicopter crash, and he had died the night before. And I'm walking to class going, and so I always remember that. It was the very first day I, I was at ASU, and I'm going, how is Stevie Ray Vaughan dead now? Like, it, it Your just, brain can't even process it. Like, yeah. That does, just these larger-than-life people, which I guess, you know, if there's any... Yeah, I don't know, silver lining to it. Uh, and for Liam Payne fans who are going through this for the first time, the one thing is when, when artists are that beloved, because everybody we've talked about today, the younger artists, we both have mm -hmm. heard of them, the older artists, probably younger people have heard, you know, who Elvis and John Lennon are. In a way, you become immortal because, of, oh, because of the love of the fans and the love of the music and what that person represents. They become larger than life. Yeah, You now live forever. Tru and it's sad that you're not actually here for that, yeah. but, but they're, they are never forgotten. Trust us, uh, because we have lived through it, that 40 years from now, you will still listen to those songs and it will still mean just as much to you and move you just as much as it right. did in your, you know, in your formative years. Yeah, so, yeah, it's, it's sad for, for Liam that he's gone. It's sad for his fans. Certainly, obviously, his family and friends, that's a separate thing. Right. Uh, but but his music does live on forever. This is, All these people, their music lives on forever. That is the beauty of music. Uh, it does, in a way, make you immortal. Uh, so we we celebrate the music. Right. And I guess if there's a if there's a positive that we can end this on is that uh, is the power of music to, uh, to help you remember people, to help you celebrate people, and just feel good about your own life. Right. right? Take take the happiness because that's all you can do in life. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to get out of here before we burst into yeah, tears. I know. Uh, <laughs> that is going to do it for this episode. We will see you next week on Get to the Hook.